we're going to consider a concept from physics called work. Now, work is just a number, and it tells you how much energy you've spent moving an object from one location to another. You may have learned a simple formula to calculate work where it just says it's the product of force times distance. Now, there are some conditions for that to be true. In particular, the force has to be a constant, and the force has to be in the direction that you're moving the object. Now, this situation isn't very realistic. Rather than having a force that's in the direction of motion, you might have a force that's on some angle. For example, you might have a rope in which that you're trying to pull. If I want to move at this distance here, how much work am I doing to get it to this new location? So if I want to make it more realistic, I should be using vectors. We're going to talk about a force vector, and we'll denote it like this. And to keep things more general, we're also going to talk about something called a displacement vector. Now, in a displacement vector, that says you would like to move at a certain distance and in a certain direction. We're interested in aligning the force with the displacement. If this is my displacement vector, and this is my force vector, then I have to figure out how much of that force vector is going in the direction of the displacement. I'm interested in this shadow of the force vector. From geometry, if this force has a magnitude there, the component that I'm interested in is this one, the magnitude of F times the cosine of the angle between them. I'm going to calculate then the work to be this portion of the force, the part of the force vector that's in the direction of the displacement vector, and then I'm going to multiply it by the size of the displacement vector, which is essentially just distance. I can reorganize this into the magnitude of the force vector, the magnitude of the displacement vector, times the cosine of the angle between them. This is how we generalize work. Now, it's concepts like this that led mathematicians to define a special way to multiply two vectors that will produce this. And this is something that we're going to call the dot product. If I've got two vectors, A and B, and there's some angle between them, the dot product is going to be the symbol A dotted with B. That dot represents multiplication. It's the length of A length of b times the cosine of the angle between them. So I'm multiplying all three of these items together. The dot product measures how much of a points in the direction of b. If you're interested in a little picture, remember that we're shining our flashlight down here and we're picking out this length and it's this length that we're multiplying with the length of b. Sometimes the dot product is also called the scalar product because it produces a scalar. So the result is a number, not a vector. The dot product gives information about relative orientation between the two vectors. The angle between these two vectors can only ever be between 0 and pi. Once we get to an angle greater than pi, it's just essentially like flipping this picture upside down and it repeats. If the angle between the vectors is 0, you've got two vectors that are pointing in exactly the same direction. The cosine of 0 is equal to 1. Cosine can only ever be between negative 1 and 1, so this is the maximum possible value. In this particular case, if I were to talk about the dot product, the cosine of 0, as we mentioned, gives a 1. So all we ever get is just the length of A times the length of B. This is that simple definition of work that we talked about. This is the maximum possible value and in this case, we say that the vectors are parallel. If you have an angle between 0 and pi over 2, or 90 degrees, your vectors are oriented, as I've drawn in the picture above, 
Now, remember from pre-calculus, there's this little diagram that tells you about the sine of all the trig functions. If your angle is between 0 and pi over 2, that means it's in quadrant 1. And if it's in quadrant 1, all of the trig functions are positive. And that means that the cosine of your angle has to be positive. The other thing to remember is that the length of any vector is always greater than or equal to zero. So if you put all of these facts together, when you talk about the dot product and you've got an angle between zero and pi over two, these are positive quantities. This is a positive quantity, and that means then that the dot product is positive. If you ever come up with a dot product that is positive, that means that the angle is an acute angle. Now, a very special case happens when your angle is exactly equal to pi over 2. Geometrically, in this particular case, you've got two vectors that have this orientation. There's a right angle between them. We say that the vectors are perpendicular. The cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. And in this particular case, if I were to take two vectors that are non-zero, so they don't have zero lengths, this produces value of zero. It's possible for you to multiply two non-zero vectors and get a scalar value of zero. This is an extremely important case. It's so important that I'm going to think about it the other way as well. If I ever encounter a dot product where I have a zero value and we always consider non-zero vectors, which means that these lengths are positive, only way to start with a zero dot product, this has to mean that the only way this is possible is that the cosine is zero which has to mean that these vectors have an angle of pi over 2. We are going to say that the dot product equals 0 if and only if, this is the only way for the dot product to be 0, is if the angle between the vectors is pi over 2. So this means that the vectors are perpendicular, or we're going to create this other generalized word called orthogonal. We use this fancy word because this idea extends throughout all of math and it applies to things that aren't necessarily geometric. If the angle you've got between your vectors is between pi over 2 and pi, the angle lives in quadrant 2, which means that the cosine of that angle has to be negative. In that particular case, then the dot product is going to produce this particular quantity, these are positive, this is negative, so that means the dot product is negative. When you have a negative dot product, that means the angle between is obtuse, larger than 90 degrees. If the angle between the vectors is exactly pi, that means you've got two vectors that are oriented like this, there's the angle between them, the cosine of pi is negative 1, or the smallest value that that cosine could ever take. The dot product here is going to be a, b times a negative 1. This is the minimum or the smallest value that the dot product could ever take. It's a lot of information, but, but the point here is that the dot product is a tool to measure orientation or relative orientation between vectors. And so, for example, if I give you a vector 2i minus 6j and I give you a vector that's 12k, here is my three-dimensional set of axes. This vector right here has no z component, so it turns out that it lives in the xy plane. And if you were to sit there and draw it out, you would find that this vector is somewhere here on the plane u. This vector right here, 12k, points out of the plane. So there's v, 
you should be able to see from this picture that those two vectors have an angle of pi over 2 between them. And that means then that the dot product of those two vectors must be 0. Now this is great for these special situations, but how to find the value of the dot product when the vectors aren't orthogonal? Or how do we find the angle between the two vectors? Maybe that's something that we'd like to do. Unfortunately, this geometric definition, which was nice and intuitive and had physical uh, background or a physical basis, doesn't take us very far. We run into the same problem that we ran into before. We need increased precision. And that means we need to move away from the geometric interpretation and come up with a better algebraic version. So we need a new way to calculate this dot product and we're going to have a version that relies on the components of a vector.